for, for those coaches that are working in sport and they're strength and conditioning coaches, but they haven't built that or they haven't taken that plunge, I guess, of running their own business and they're, they're making ends meet in another industry, um, but they want to take that plunge, uh, at what would be your advice for yeah, renting a gym or running a PT business? Yeah, look, I think the, the first thing is, and probably one that, again, is another common one that we come across is, I probably started the majority of the clientele that I was working with, admittedly, was, you know, some of the the players' partners, to be honest with you, that, you know, just wanted to simply tone up. A couple of them had, you know, some little sort of sporting goals, triathlons and things like that as well. But really, I was at a stage in my, in my life where to, to make ends meet, I just had to say yes to everybody and anybody. So I couldn't really be selective in, in um, you know, who I trained with and, and met some amazing people and actually you know, found that uh, received a lot of gratitude for, for working with, with, with all sorts of people as opposed to, you know, just sort of ex- exclusively saying athletes. Throughout this stage of, of strength and conditioning, um, is there a particular highlight of your career as an s c that you look back on fondly? Yeah, that's a really, uh, that's probably a hard question, I think. Uh, I think, you know, it's hard to go past those, those any of the championships you've been involved with, them, no matter what level. I think, as we talked about before, probably the, the most special one from my point of view is the the sample premiership with the West Adelaide Footy Club, you know, being um, the first opportunity for me to take over the reins and truly feel like I was, you know, um, steering the ship, you know, for, from at least that aspect of the program. And um, in a sense, it's been a launching pad for a number of other opportunities that have that have sort of followed on from then. You know, it was because of that that the Darren Lee McCreed Academy called and, and you know, and then that's flowed into you know work at the power and things like that too. So look, there's been yeah, many highlights, but I would say probably that's what we want to 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 pinpoint it simply because I think it had such a great impact for sure. In terms of the the business side of things, who who do you model off and how do you go about learning those side of things? Like Obviously, as a coach, we do our degrees, we, we learn off our mentors, and then suddenly now you're running a facility. Uh, is that learning as you go? Is it listening to podcasts? Is it speaking to mentors that are doing, like you mentioned, Athletes Authority? Take us through for business owners. What's the best way to, to learn that side, do you think? Yeah, admittedly, it's probably a blend of all those things. Certainly at the start, it was just making it up, to be honest with you. Um, as I said, I was fortunate enough, so uh, my mother-in-law, she... And um, we worked uh, as a manager at a swimming recreational facility for 20 years. So there were certainly aspects of that that she that we really lent on her to sort of assist us with. But for the most part, you know, running a gym, we didn't really know anybody at the time that was that was doing it, to be honest. Um, just a, a great network of of people in different professions. You know, one of one of my sample athletes' dads was involved in IT. So I reached out to him and he set up our back-end systems and our surveillance systems to allow us to be able to to, to be 24 seven as well. So you know, he's been incredible and still is involved in, in the business to, to this day. We had, um, you know, we talked about Adrian Setri and Brett Johns before. Adrian Setri, as well as being a Port Adelaide superstar, he runs a, a painting business. So, you know, he organized painting the walls for us. What about favorite inspirational quote and life motto? Uh, look, I like to, uh, well, I've actually got this um, tattooed on my chest. I got a tattoo on my chest a long time ago. Uh, pain is temporary, glory is forever. I think there's a lot of transfer to um, that, whether you, know, you take that in its literal term or, you know, metaphorical. You know, there's been many circumstances that we've talked about, even in today's podcast, where there's been a short-term instance that's provided a bit of pain, but everything happens for a reason or, you know, everything has its purpose. And I think if you stick to the process and, and you know, don't give up on, on whatever it is you're chasing, you know, if, if I'd given up in those two circumstances where I've been told that, you know, that the soft caps are up and we can't be doing any more, then, you know, we wouldn't have a business or, you know, wouldn't be pursuing these, you know, pretty exciting um, contracts that we've got coming up as well from that, from a pro point of view. So, yeah, I think that's the biggest one that we, that we buy by for sure. 